What's happening guys and girls, Acronator here, and welcome to another episode of World of Warcraft Dungeon Overview. This episode will be going over the Lower Blackrock Spire, which just so happens to be the last vanilla dungeon. Anyways, I'm going to be running through this dungeon with my survival hunter you see here, so with that being said, let's dive straight into it. As you may recall from the Blackrock Depths Dungeon Overview, Blackrock Mountain is a much more lively place than its scorched exterior lets on. Deep in the core of this mountain is where Ragnaros and his Dark Iron Servitors lurk, but the upper reaches are home to an entirely different threat to Azeroth. The Black Dragon Nefarian has teamed up with Rend Blackhand's Dark Horde within Blackrock Spire to wage war against their downstairs neighbors. Using the experimental knowledge Nefarian has sequestered, the Dark Horde has created untold monstrosities. Bordering both Elwyn Forest and Dun so closely, the Alliance would like nothing more than to silence the Black Dragonflight once and for all. Likewise, the Horde has been waiting for a chance to put an end to Rend Blackhand and his Dark Horde ever since they first split apart following the Second War. For once, both factions have a common enemy in sight, and are willing to cooperate for the betterment of the world. Lower Blackrock Spire is a level 48 to 65 dungeon located inside of Blackrock Mountain. You should remember that the mountain can be found in the northwestern corner of the Burning Steps and the southwestern corner of the Searing Gorge. This time around, I'll be entering from the Burning Step side, mostly so that you can see what the other entrance of the mountain looks like. The southern entrance is a lot harder to miss, since it's much more grandiose than its northern counterpart. Just head up the bridge and make your way into the giant dwarven structure. Once you make it inside the giant cylindrical room that should look familiar to you at this point, head to the right and until you see the meeting stone. From there, make your way through the corridors as you see me doing here. This much can be a little bit confusing if you haven't memorized the way, so pay careful attention to which hallways I'm going down. Also, the world map is thankfully useful to reference when you're trying to orient yourself inside of the mountain, so try to use that if you get lost. You shouldn't have too much trouble with aggroing mobs until you get into the corridor after the meeting stone. There, you'll come across Scar Shield Legion orcs. They can be found in groups occasionally, but they shouldn't be too hard for you to take on. Once you make it into the final room, head down on the ramp and the dungeon entrance will be through the second doorway on the right. I know that there isn't a visible portal, but trust me, it's there. Before you encounter any bosses, you should cross two rope bridges. After you cross the second one, you should find roughshod pikes lined up against the wall to the left. Make sure everyone in your group picks one up. This will be very important later on. Omak is the official leader of the Ogres within Blackrock Spire, teaming up with orcs and trolls to form the Dark Horde after the Second War. A few brave souls have attempted to challenge Omak for the right to rule their people, though they've all fallen in just a few blows each. This has led to rumors of Omak being protected by some sort of dark power. Omak has the ability to knock back players, meaning that it would probably be a good idea to clear out the other ogres in the room before engaging him. He'll also berserk when reaching 50% health, so be prepared to burst him down when that happens. I should also mention that Omak will drop an item that you can loot called Omak's Head. This is important later on, so make sure that someone in your group grabs this. Vash Gajin is infamous within the Dark Horde for her magical expertise coupled with her mental instability. Hexes and rambling, they seem to go hand in hand, don't they? This is probably one of the hardest bosses in this dungeon, if not in the entirety of vanilla dungeons. Vash Gajin doesn't have that many abilities, yet I've never done a successful clear without wiping at least once. The two abilities that she does have are absolutely devastating when put together. First, she casts Hex on random players, which transforms them into frogs for 8 seconds. She does this relatively often, so it's highly likely that multiple people in your party will be transformed at once. The other ability that Vashk Ejin casts is called Curse of Blood, which increases attack damage taken for all players within 10 yards. Do your group a favor and stand far away from the boss if you're a caster. They don't need you getting one-shotted along with the rest of them. The most consistent strategy for this fight seems to be ignoring the trash mobs located around the boss and burst her down as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, she casts Hex too often to dispel every single cast, so just Pray that it doesn't hit the tank or the healer too often. Voon is a troll strategist who enjoys a challenge more than anything else, which is exactly why he decided to join the Dark Horde during the end of the Second War. That is the only reason why he bothered to assist Ren Blackhand in a battle that was already lost. 
Voon has three different phases throughout his encounter that are easily countered when you know what to look out for. The first phase happens right off the bat, where the boss will just attack normally. Voon changes into his second phase once he hits 65% health, where he'll start to use cleave attacks. Just make sure that you're either standing far enough away from the boss or standing behind him if you need to do melee damage. The final phase kicks in when the boss reaches 40% health, where he begins stunning, interrupting, and knocking back nearby players. Just stand further away if you don't want any of these things to happen to you. This bit isn't about any bosses, but I found that some people can get lost and don't know where to go at this point. The path that you have to take is in the corner of the room just before Warmaster Voon's room. Then you just have to follow the path as you see me doing here, and you should be fine. Centuries ago, when the Dark Iron Dwarves were first carving out Blackrock Mountain for their new home, they stumbled across a giant arachnid's nest. The broodmother of the Smolderweb has proven herself to be a menace for all those traversing through the mountain's corridors, including the Dark Horde. The tank is going to want to face the boss away from the rest of the group for this one, since she casts an ability called Crystallize, which stuns players in front of her for a few seconds. A random player can also become afflicted with Mother's Milk, a poison effect that immobilizes any party members nearby periodically, so you're definitely going to want to step back from the rest of the group for this one. The last notable thing that happens occurs after the boss is down. Three spiders will spawn from the boss's corpse after she's taken out. They're easy enough to kill, just don't be surprised when they jump out at you. Doomhowl is the true puppet master behind the ogres of the Dark Horde, and is something similar to a Gul'dan copycat. Though he's not quite as deadly or calculating, Doomhowl does use High Lord Omok similar to how Gul'dan manipulated Blackhand in the original Horde. He even uses dark magic to brutally massacre any who oppose his dear pawn. Remember before when I told you to pick up Omok's head in the Roughshod Pike? This is where you'll need them. On the small ledge where it shows Doomhowl on the map, you'll see a small pile of skulls with a wooden pike in the center. To make sure it's the right one, you should should see the tag Urox Tribute Pile when you hover over it with your mouse. Just go up to the pile and use the head, and Urox will teleport in after a few trash mobs. From there, the only notable thing is that the boss can cast Intimidating Roar, sending players fleeing for a couple of seconds. This means that you should clear out the other ogres on the ledge before starting the encounter. Zygris is a veteran orc warrior who fought during the First War. He gained a name for himself as a ruthless killer when he would hunt down Stormwind refugees for sport. He hates the Dark Horde's current status, and loathes the claustrophobic halls of the Spire even more. He dreams of the day where he can hunt under the open skies once again. Zygris can be a bitch to fight, because he's constantly drinking healing potions when damaged. He'll also use every trick in the book to stun players with nets and bombs, so try to burst him down as quickly as possible, otherwise you'll be in for a very long fight. Halicon comes from a long line of ferocious wolves and is renowned as the den mother that's birthed the best wolves for the Dark Horde's cause. The only noteworthy thing for this encounter is that there are a few warg pups wandering around the room, and they can be a bit of a pain to fight if you're not expecting the extra aggro. Gizrul is Halicon's mate, and is only seen outside of his den when Halicon calls to him. As you can imagine, he's not going to be happy about what's happened to his mate in pups. Gizrul can attack with Fatal Bite, healing him for two times the damage dealt to the tank. This can be a bit annoying when you're trying to kill the damn thing. Wormthalak is a black dragon spawn that was appointed by Nefarian to watch over the Dark Horde's forces within the Lower Spire, and to prepare them for the assault on the Dark Iron City. Wormthalak uses various sweeping attacks, so players behind the tank should stand further back from or behind the boss. Once the boss reaches 50% health, he'll begin to spawn two guards to assist him periodically. The guards spawn at the bottom of the hill and slowly make their way up, so your group ideally has until the first group makes it to the top to down the boss. What I'm saying is that you should pop all your cooldowns when the first group is summoned. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and if you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like it, maybe even subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And just a reminder that next episode we'll be starting the Burning Crusade dungeons, which I'm just thrilled about. No, but really, I may hate the Burning Crusade with a passion, but it'll still be nice to enter a new chapter for this series. Anyways, links for my social media and whatnot are in the description below. And as for the comment question, if Ragnaros and Nefarian actually did manage to duke it out instead of us players fighting them both, who do you think would have won the battle for supremacy over Blackrock? Mountain. Well, that's all the time I've got for today, so until next time, don't die.